All right, continuing in our speech open AI uh, part, let's go ahead and we're gonna build a speech bot. So previously we saw how to do text to speech, then we saw speech to text. Now we're gonna combine those two and we're going to create a bot. And then finally we'll conclude it with just talking about some future directions in generative AI. The following code you need to run, this is very OpenAI specific, so you won't be able to run it on other LLMs or, or other chat um, speech models. This assumes that you have your OpenAI key in your keys section, and it's going to install everything that it needs. We can go ahead and fast forward through that. So here we're creating a speech bot. Now this is code that we had before, so I'm not going to explain it greatly, but this is just a class that I created that abstracts a lot about what you need to do to create a, a chat bot, a text chat bot. I did make some changes to it though up here. I say you are a helpful assistant. Do not use Markdown. Normally I want Markdown, now I don't. Because Markdown is not going to be spoken well, just regular text. Limit your response to just a few sentences. Um, sometimes ch chat GPT really likes to throw a wall of text at you. And that is a little annoying when um, you, when you, uh, when, it, when it's gonna be speaking everything. So it'll go into a monologue if you're not careful. If the user said, says something that indicates that they wish to end the chat, just, just return by. Uh, no quotes, so that I can end the loop. This is really useful because this would be difficult to program. You'd have to look for bye, goodbye, all these kind of things, but this, this helps it to stop. And then the chat bot, if you, you, you probably saw this before. I have converse, I have chat. Converse actually prints everything out all nice. Chat is what we're using here. It's just gonna return it. We can dump the chat memory because it does keep memory and clear it. We can undo the last thing that we said to it or we can regenerate what it said to us last. And then we can also save and load the chat history. So if you've made real good friends with your chat bot, you can save its memory so that it doesn't cease to exist when you close down the program. Model is gpt 4 Mini, And let's just go ahead and run it just to test to see that the chatbot is indeed functional, at least at a text level, before we do anything fancy. Nice to meet you, Jeff. How can I assist you today? So now what we're going to do is I am creating this record method. We saw this before. This is just basically a fancy way to record audio while you're still in Colab. It's basically using JavaScript to do that. Got some other functions that I give you. There's generate text. So this, um, basically you, you, you give it the text, it, it generate um, the audio, and then you can actually speak the text. And you'll notice I get a whole lot more fancy here about how I speak this text than in previous ones. I have to admit, I used ChatGPT to generate this code for me, but this works with Google Colab. The trick here is when you say speak something, it is synchronous. You, with a chatbot, you don't want it to immediately just throw out what it's going to say and start running in the background because it'll actually be listening to itself and it'll start talking to itself. It's really pretty funny. Uh, so we don't want that to happen. That happened a lot when I was debugging this code. And yeah, you've got the record like we had before. So that just records the, uh, using JavaScript, it records the microphone. And then we transcribe the audio. This takes what we've spoken and turns it into text. So I think I already ran that, doesn't hurt to run it again. Those are all defined. Now this is the chat bot. Notice it's in a loop until it says, until we, we say bye. Now I can say bye to trigger it, or like I showed you in that system prompt, if I say something similar to it to, to tell it to stop, um, it, will, it will stop. And we'll, we'll look at an example of that. And then it, it, go, it goes in a loop. It prints out what the human says. It prints out what the AI said. And here you can see a conversation I was having with it before. I don't think it actually stores these, does it? I'm doing well. Thank you. Oh, it does. How okay. Can I assist you today? So let's, that was from my previous conversation when I was creating it. Let's go ahead and run this. 
I'm doing well, thank you. How can I assist you today? Okay, it's recording now. Hi, my name is Jeff. Oh, it's in that endless loopy kind of thing. You've got to, you got to stop it. And then run it. Okay, hi, my name is Jeff. How are you? I'm doing well, Jeff. How can I assist you today? I want to know how much longer it's going to be until AI takes over the planet. The timeline for AI taking over the planet is highly speculative and varies widely among experts. Many believe that while AI will continue to advance and play a significant role in society, a complete takeover is unlikely in the foreseeable future. It's more about collaboration between humans and AI. Goodbye, I'm done talking. Bye. All right, it's done, bye. So there you see, we were able to, uh, we were able to talk to it and it responded back and forth. So this is, this is a collab one. If you wanted to do this, say in JavaScript or as a cell phone app or something like that, obviously you'd have to do a lot of platform specific coding, but this, this really just gets you started. So thank you for watching the video. And if you please like, and subscribe, all that usual YouTuber stuff. And, um, Thanks for watching. Definitely subscribe so you can see future projects that I that I work on with this.